This is an annotated video chart of Advaxis Incorporated, brought to you by AllPennyStocks.com. Advaxis is a NASDAQ bullet board company, trading on our ticker ADXS. You can see it's been on a slide for about the last nine months of the chart. It appears to have found a bottom right down here around a dime. It's come back up, retraced. Now it's making a higher low. Strong move today. Didn't hold the gains. Volume was good. 2.3 million shares traded. Closed up just over 13 cents. Pushing its way back over the 50-day moving average and all the shorter-term moving averages. That's a bullish chart. Nice volume spike to make that happen. So we're going to take a look at these lower indicators and see what they're telling us. Seeing a nice uptrend in the MACD and the PPO. Also seeing the MACD histogram trend back towards zero, which is something that we look for a little bit longer term. Also trending back towards zero. Histogram is about ready to pop through zero, which tells us that the bullish cross is about to happen. Sharp move today in the positive DI from the ADX. That's because of that sharp spike up. It didn't hold the upper shadow, but that sort of movement takes this positive DI, shoots it up straight like that. Negative DI, of course, breaking back down south. Bullish cross of the positive DI through the ADX. That's a nice look to it. We reference this a lot of times. We want to see the MFI get its way above 50. All three of them basically moving together. Still all close 52 to 55. It's another thing you want to see. Breaking through 50. Now we want to see it hold that and start to trend above it. Accumulation distribution. Not really a valley at this point, so the trend line is not really justified. The point is we just want to see it make a higher low and start to trend back north and break through this downtrend that it's been in. So we want to see this line break back up this way. Shake and money flow also moves south today even with the movement. And that again, same way with the money flow. It's because it had this buying pressure and couldn't hold. So from a volume to money standpoint, they wanted to slip back down. CCI breaking through 100 on a big move. Of course, by definition with Lambert, that break of 100 is the buy point. It's trading outside of its normal mean. It's a hold until it breaks back down through negative 100. Full stow, we're seeing break back through 20. That's the first sign of any momentum coming into the stock. That's the very early beginning of a bullish chart. That's the first thing we look for. Ultimately, we want to see it break through 50. And much like many other indicators, we want to see it trend over 50 and hold over that line. Tricks, what you're going to look for on that is for this to try and flatline somewhere through this area, create a new higher low, and start to create a channel. Channels with the tricks are nice. So what you look for is this to try and break back through the signal line, move back above zero, and then try and go back up here and make a higher high to coordinate with the higher low. Great long-term indicator. Those are the things to look for. But again, it's usually a little lagging, but you want to wait and you want to see that cross. So with it starting to make that curl, and hence, that's a good sign. Of course, the buying pressure today with the volume spike sent the RSIs moving quickly too. Again, what's important is holding over 50. So we're going to look at this tomorrow and see immediately what it does. If it wants to break back down, this chart could stay kind of bearish. But if it can hold and start to trend over 50, the chart has a whole different look to it. And it's very nice. This is a very early beginning to a possible move. This pattern right through here, it's called a meeting line pattern. It's a two-day candle pattern with a stock gap down. Buying pressure came back in. It closed up the day and at the same level that it closed the previous day. It's called a meeting line two-day candle pattern. They got confirmation today of a reversal. So now technically speaking, we're looking at this to try and continue an uptrend and make a move off this bottom, which is significant because we're always looking for higher lows. From a resistance standpoint, there's a definitive resistance level right through that area. See, it had a hard time with it even when it wicked up back here in November. It closed back down. Couldn't break above 13.5. Today, another long shadow. Still pulled back down. This moving above 13.5 is a kind of critical point for it. It's going to be an area because you want to see it get through 14 as well. Very strong support back in here in August and September that it fell through. Pretty much breezed right back through it on the uptrend, but from a historic standpoint, we're going to want to see it take that out. If this is going to try and continue an uptrend and make the move, we're going to want to see it break through 13 and a half and 14 cents. And if it does, even though resistance will be pretty strong right in here at 15, I'd look for it to be even stronger at 16. If this is going to develop an uptrend, I think that 15 will fall if it breaks through 13 and a half and 14. 15 will definitely be some resistance from a historic standpoint, but 16 will be much stronger because the 200 day is in effect right there. And it's also a historic resistance level over several months. Pretty nice gains from a percentage standpoint to go from just over 13 to up to 16. So you never try and aim too high to begin with. You look for this, most importantly, to hold the base, start to make an uptrend. If it wants to dip back down in a perfect world, it will hold 13. But I'd also be willing to say that as a bottom support from where it is right now, this area right here around 127, it needs to hold that. It was a pretty decent little support level that it popped through, came back, climbed back above it. In a perfect world, like I say, hold 13. That's the 50-day moving average. And there's nice price per share support in there. 
but I'm already getting it cluttered up with lines and I don't want to confuse people that aren't super experienced at technical analysis. So let's look for a bottom support there. First resistance at 13 and a half, all the way up to 14, and then a possible next resistance up around 16 cents. But to reiterate, most importantly, is holding a support, continuing to make higher highs, and trying to establish an uptrend. Let's look for volume to stay strong, although it doesn't have to necessarily go to this level that it did today. We just like to see it continue to increase over its average. So if it got trading up somewhere over a million shares, that's fine too. We just want to see that being a little bit stronger to show that buying pressure is there and investors are looking at this as a buying opportunity. These are the things that I'll be looking for in the ADXS chart. As always, the annotated video chart is merely my interpretation. I'm not a financial consultant. I strongly encourage you to do your own proper due diligence. Consult with a qualified financial advisor before making any investment decisions. Past performance is not a guarantee of future results. Please visit the allpennystocks.com website to view the full disclaimer disclosure. Do not base any investment decisions upon any material found on the website and or within this video chart. No person employed by All Penny Stocks is a registered investment advisor or licensed broker-dealer. Thank you for watching and trade smart.